Hi everyone, this is John Pearson. Just wanted to take a moment to make a video to show a new Dynamo package that I made for Dynamo 1.3 and Revit 2018. So with Revit 2018, there were some API enhancements which include access to some of this warning stuff that we always have in Revit model. So they added the API to be able to grab these warnings, export to Excel, or mitigate these issues. So I went ahead and made a Dynamo package called Bing that does this for you. Uh, I called it Bing because in programming, a Bing is an exclamation point. And if you Google search warning signs, they always have an exclamation point. So it just kind of made sense to me. So what we'll do is I have my sample model open and we have quite a few warnings kind of going on in this model already. I actually purposely created a few more as well, uh, but this model comes with a few, which is kind of interesting. And I thought that was kind of funny too. So what we'll do is we'll fire up Dynamo. In my case, I already have Dynamo 1.3 open. And then we just need to install a package called Bang. Uh, I already have it installed. Um, it's literally, you search for a package if you haven't ever done that before, and you just download this one right here. Um, and you'll be able to use it. This package will only work in Revit 2018 because of that ability to do this stuff in the Revit 2018 API. That's partly why I released this as its own Dynamo package because it only works on Revit 2018 and I didn't want to bundle that in Rhythm or Beaker or something and then people are wondering why it doesn't work for an older version. So it's pretty clear what it works on. So what we could do is it only has one node in it for now, but what we could do is drop that node on the canvas. We'll search for a Boolean toggle and tell it true to go ahead and run. So really quickly it goes through and runs and it tells you all of these errors that are going on in your model. So quite a few errors are happening right now in this model, of course. Uh, it also, so it'll output the text of the error as, as well as the elements that meet that error criteria. So what we'll focus on right now is probably multiple rooms are in the same place. So what we'll do is we'll the way that I like to use this node, because I wanted it to be fairly uh, adaptable, is I just output all of this stuff. So what we could do is like a string contains on the warning text, and we'll just search for multiple rooms. And we'll just leave this as false for ignore case, because let's see, it'll automatically put true for the ones that I want. So from there, we could do a filter by Boolean mask, grab my failing elements output, and we could see that I now have all of the rooms that were failing on the import. So I just filtered out my failing elements based on that criteria. I kind of want to make this a little more adaptable to where maybe you choose in a warning or something, but for now, this kind of works. So from here, we don't want to just delete all of these rooms that don't meet. That's not really what we want to do. So one thing that I would also suggest is getting a parameter. So this is kind of how to clear some warnings in Revit. So what we'll do is we'll get, and I think there might even be a built-in node for room name nowadays. Get room name. And I believe this is a built-in node. It is. So what we could do is we can do the input into the room name and it'll actually output all of the names of stuff. So the logic that we're using is if the room's just called room, it's probably one that I don't need and someone clicked more than once. So in this case, I purposely clicked more than once in a few rooms and they're just named room 213, 215, 236, so on and so forth. One thing I want to point out with the room name node is it actually outputs the name and the number, which sometimes isn't perfect. It's not necessarily what you want all the time. If we were to use the get parameter by name and put a name input, that'll actually just output the name. So in my case, I will go ahead and use this one. Uh, what we also might go ahead and do is in Beaker, we have some nodes to filter things by names. So what we could do is filter by name. And we should be able to say room. We might have to do name contains because if it outputs the number, but we'll see. Yeah, so we'll have to do name contains to see if it contains the name room in my case. 
So there we go. So right away I grabbed all of the rooms that are just called room. If we want to reiterate that just for the sake of making sure what I'm doing, uh, I could just do another room name node and see if those are all called room 213, room 214. So now we have the rooms that are the problem rooms, the extra ones that I don't need in my model. So what we can do is one of my favorite nodes to use for deleting things, because to clear this warning, we'll just have to delete those rooms, is the delete elements from spring nodes. And it's springs.doc.delete elements. I really like this node because it takes a Boolean to be able to tell it when to run. So what we could do is switch this to true, plug that in, and it'll go through and actually delete all of those rooms that don't meet my criteria for me. So if we go back into Revit, warnings, I won't have any more warnings that say duplicate rooms. So I just mitigated some Revit warnings pretty quickly with Dynamo. We went through a few step-by-step -step processes, but at the same time, we went ahead and fixed that. So another warning that I want to go ahead and help clear is this identical instances in same place. So this will use a similar logic. So what we'll do is jump back in Dynamo. I'm going to unplug the delete elements. And what we could do is toggle this input on this get warnings tool. It'll actually refresh and it'll tell me some warnings that are going on. So now what we need to do is get identical instances. So in this case, I'll just type in identical instances. And it'll actually go through and filter out that stuff that is identical instances in the same place. So now what we could do is this one, I'm not as concerned about which one I'm deleting. Uh, you might be if you have like a mark parameter assigned or something like that. In my case, I'm not. So what I'll do is just use a node called first item, change my lacing to longest by right clicking. And let me actually show what that does a little. So in, it'll actually just grab that first list. That's not necessarily what I want. So what we could do is change the lacing to longest. And what this node will now do is it'll go through and get the first one from each list. So it's going through and going, grab the first one, grab the first one, grab the first one. So once again, uh, same thing. What we could do even is we can isolate this stuff or color code it just to figure out what's going on. But what we could do is doc.delete elements. True. And we now got rid of all of those duplicates. So if I go back into Revit once again, I now don't have that error anymore of duplicate items in the same place. And if I go to my furniture layout, I actually duplicated a bunch of them right here on top of each other. And there's no difference. This stuff still looks the same and we're good. Uh, you would probably want to be a little more careful with what you delete, of course, uh, if you're doing this on a live model. But that's one way of clearing some of the errors. So those are two errors that we cleared now using the Revit 2018 API and some of the tools that are just available to us. So I hope that helps everyone out and shows kind of some of the capability of this package. I hope to change it and make it adapt and be a little better, but that's the initial release. So thanks for tuning in and uh, stay tuned for more cool videos regarding Dynamo and Revit. Thanks.